Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Will Motivation and today in our video we are going to cover why you, and I say everybody, should consider starting a small business or a side hustle, side business, whatever you want to call it. Let's go. Motivation. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so in today's video, we're talking about why you should start a side hustle or a small business. If this is your first time coming to my channel, is about you know uh, what we call wheel motivation, which is cars that motivate people. And some of us are car people, we like cars. So in the second part of this video, we are going to the Toy Barn here in Columbus, Ohio. We're talking about an event that we might do that's coming up. So you guys stay tuned for that. And we're going to look at some inventory, do a little car shopping. This might have something brewing, but uh, we're going to go over to the toy bar and check out the inventory, see what kind of exotic cars they have. And we are taking the Ferrari F12 with the new wheels that some of you guys say I should keep, but some of you guys also say I should go all black with the wheels again. So drop me a comment, you know, let's, let's get this once and for all. Should we go all black with the wheels or should we keep the brushed gold? Uh, rim or barrel on the on the wheel. So anyway, we're gonna take the Ferrari F12. Oh, yeah If you never saw this car, these are custom seats that we put in uh, with the red interior the red guts Gotta throw the key in put it in the on position hit start listen up Yo, I'm gonna put this I'm gonna put this in manual mode. So we're on our way to the toy barn We're gonna get into today's video topic which is why you want to start a small business or a side hustle. Let me put this in manual mode so you guys can hear the glorious sound of the F12, V12. Yo, listen, listen. <laughs> Yo. This is the most slept on, underrated supercar out there, the Ferrari F12. But anyway, we're gonna drive out to the toy bar. I'm gonna get into this, you know, the little story I got to tell you guys. My experience, you know, being an entrepreneur, business owner, uh, you know, and how it's affected my life, my finances, all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, first we gotta get situated. I don't wanna do nothing dangerous, like try to belong. But uh, let's enjoy the ride. big deal about folks taking Ferraris and Lamborghinis to the drive-thru at McDonald's. <laughs> this happens on a daily basis for most supercar owners, so about to get me a, uh, can I get a filet of fish with cheese, extra tartar, and a small Sprite. All right, so we just made it to the toy barn. Ferrari F12 drove great, as usual. Um, but they always got some heat up here, so I don't know if you guys, what do you guys think? Should we do 
the message of the day first um, about entrepreneurship, or should we check out the whips first? What do you guys think? Uh, I think you guys want to check out the whips first, so let's check out the whips first, do a little shopping, car shopping, and then we'll do the message of the day. How about that? All right, so we can't come over here, can't come over to the toy barn without talking about the cars. Just had a quick meeting with Brian and Mark, so. We got some stuff, we got a little bit of stuff cooking. You guys stay tuned for sure. All right, so we got the Porsche right here. This is, is this is a turbo? This is a turbo, yes. Graphite blue turbo. Graphite blue, 911 Turbo S right here. So these are for sale, you guys, so. This is the 720 I put down pipes and an exhaust on. Down pipe and exhaust, 720, Spider. Oh, Army Tricks. Yep. Uh, look at that. All right, so somebody needs a uh, 720. We got C8 right there. Always got to show love to the C8. Oh, this is a red interior. Check it out. Look at the red interior, man. So if you guys need a C8, C8, we got uh, we got the owner, man, on the humble over here, owner of the toy barn, Sean Cunix. We got the Porsche GT. Is that a GT4? Or this is 718 Cayman. 718 Cayman. All right, so look at the interior, black on black, dope. Look, yeah, man, mix it up with the S2000 right there. We got the GT. Um, I like that scheme, gloss black, silver. It's got the. I like those side skirts with the gloss black right there. And then you got the interior with the red. Sick. All right, so which one? We need to get a clip of the McLaren exhaust. Uh, oh, like firing it up? Uh, he's got the treats. All right, so Brian is going to fire up the 720 for us. The thing I like about the Toy Barn, man, they're real down to earth over here. So if you came over to check them out, they let you get up and close and personal with the vehicles. You know. It's not uncommon for them to let you sit in the car, fill it out, um, and just have that experience of getting up close and personal with uh, some of these supercars, man. So, shout out to the Toy Barn. They've always been um, treating me really good from buying a bunch of my past like supercar stuff like that, but then also um, I come over here and work with them in the service department. And Brian's the one who threw on the mods to my F12, did me right, perfect execution. So he's getting ready to fire this thing up with the uh, army tricks. Oh snap! Oh snap! Check it out. Digital dash. That's the hood. Oh, check it out. Race mode. That's sick. Army tricks. It's got valve control on it. Ah, uh, snap. So. Yo, you know, uh, snaps and crackles. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. All right, so if anybody's looking for a uh, 720, already modded with a downpipe, so you know it's crazy fast. Thanks, Brian. So you know we got we got to talk to Brian, man, because he's got the inside scoop on all the hot whips that's going on. So you done any cool projects lately? Uh, let's see, man. I'm trying to think. Mostly just maintenances and stuff, but a lot of good cars we have right now. Some uh, R8 V10 back there. Okay. Uh, 15. So okay. A little bit newer style of facelift. Hey, look, he, he, he took off. He almost did a burnout in the UPS truck. <laughs> uh, the MP4 I just got done with. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might have something in the works with that. I'm trying to... Uh, Some mods? I think I might... Not to give too much away, but I might be working on something here where I'm going to get hands on with one of our lot cars kind of do something with it. Oh yeah? Whether it's 
a wrap or an engine build or something. But Yo, make sure to hit me up. Um, you're talking about that today, actually. Cause I, yeah, I'll come by and do a video, you know, once you get done with it. Yeah, so that'll be fun. So I also have, um, I got lowering, lowering um, springs coming in for the Aventador. So I think they were ordered already. Oh, look at this, look at this, okay. Got a, some G-Wagons. You guys, those are hard to come by too, right? Now, I, I like that TTRS. I, I, I made a note to myself to come and look at this because I'm wrapping my Audi, my S6. I'm wrapping it and I'm putting um, like side skirts in the front end and I'm gonna wrap the skirts like they did the aluminum optics. Like the, they got it in the back. I got side skirts for the side, which will, I'm gonna do the mirrors like that. And then we'll do the front skirt just like that. So this is like. I'm actually surprised it's still here. Somebody has some, to so somebody come buy this thing, man. You can mod these too, right? Oh, yeah. Man. You are, get it done while you're here. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there we go, right there. Glad he said that. I definitely want to tune my S6. So we'll bring the S6 to Brian and do an APR tune. We'll do APR, yeah. And uh, there's like a lowering. A uh, module or something that can control my yeah. um, so we'll add that too. So that's a little project me and Brian could do over here at the toy barn A lot of times too uh, makes it easier for people uh, One thing a lot of people don't know Is say if I came in and bought this car and I wanted to APR flash it. Yep A lot of times we'll we'll even roll that into the deal. Ooh so Roll it into the financing. Honestly, Ooh. If, if that was me, I would be doing it. Yep but you can we can do all kinds of stuff like that here. So, and that probably buy this, flash it, and pull off a lot. So. This is a is that a V6 or a four or a four cylinder? Five cylinder. Five, okay, yeah, five cylinder, and it's turbo. So I don't know if it's supercharged or turbo, honestly. So if it's turbo, those flashes do work, man. Yeah. So this will be a super fun car to drive. Yeah. It's got that um, stitching on the inside too. So somebody's looking for a fun car to drive. That'd be a fun daily right there. Quattro, all that good stuff. One of my favorite trucks we've had in a while. This thing is beautiful. This, uh, is this one of those fast ones? Like, cause I know one of them is, yeah, one of them is crazy. They were racing them. This thing is beautiful. I do like that. And it's got the black on black interior. And let's get a, let's get a bigger, a nicer look at it. That's a, that's your. GLS 63. I'm not even a salesman, but this, <laughs> thing, this thing is just beautiful. Every time someone drives it, I just stop and stare at it. Oh, look at the Aston Martin right there, man. That's those sound good, man. Those those Aston Martins sound good. Ooh, I do have an Aston to show you. Uh oh. That, that I did this morning. It just came in. Uh oh. We got anything cool in there? On the inside? Oh, we got a couple Porsches uh, the and a Viper. You guys want to see that stuff? I'm hearing a lot of yeses, man. I'm hearing. I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. We check it out. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, all right. So, yeah, I heard some. I heard some yeses after you, sir. So we got we got to check out what's going on. So we got an F type, SVR. SVR. That's the fast one. Rare. So y'all need a Jaguar. That's a good starter exotic. Oh yeah. We've got the 911 Turbo S. Another one. Clean one. Another 911 Turbo yeah. S. They got the fast stuff going on in here. And then you got the Vipers. So I know a lot of people are Viper fans. So I'm going to show you guys some love. Look at the wing on this thing. There you go. Shout out to my man Loki Fee. He used to have one of these bad boys. But that's a beast. Hands down. That's a beast. All right. Let's go see what else we got. Let's go. On. Got a tuner car in here, man. With a wrap on it. I don't even know. Look at that half. A Nismo 370, I think. I didn't even see that thing. Look at that. It's a wrap. Crazy. All right, check out this California T. Shout out to my man Derek. Congratulations on your California out there in uh, Seattle. Shout out to you, my man. But this this is a real nice one, man. This is I like these, man. Yep. Derek, you might have to go with a his and hers, bro. Hey man, they don't call this place the toy barn for nothing, man. Look at that. Got the Beamer with the wheels. M3. Dang. It's all kind of stuff out here. Hellcats. All kind of stuff. Toys everywhere. Uh-oh, we got an RS3. Y'all know my story with the RS3, man. Gone in 60 seconds. 
I had one for about a week and it was gone. Oh, that's gonna be this gonna be for sale? Yeah. See, if I had unlimited funds like Brian, I would definitely buy that just for the fun of it and probably get rid of it in another 60 seconds. Check it out. These are these are good cars, man. Race car status. And this one has a PDK. I highly recommend the PDK actually more than the manual because I had a manual. Actually, I saw it to a toy bar. Yeah. I was getting ready to talk about it like, yeah, I took an L on that one. <laughs> Yo, check it out. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's like a scat pack or something. It has the... the Yo, that, oh, with the demon wheels. Demon in the white body. It may be a Hellcat. I mean, if that's not fake, it's a Hellcat. Body package, right? Yeah, red eye. yeah, yeah, yeah. Red eye. Is that a wrap or is that the paint? I think that's the paint. Yeah, there you go, guys. Wide body, red eye, right there. And they got all kind of stuff. Y'all come up here and wheel and deal, man. Take some of this inventory off their hands. <laughs> 360 Modena. They got cars everywhere. NSX, we just got it. NSX. These are going for a premium now, right? Oh yeah. So. Dr. NSX now, who used to be Dr. R8, who used to be. <laughs> Here you go, man. Get your NSX. All right, let's go upstairs. Yo, check out this Aston Martin. Super clean. Nice little sports car. Get the top off for the rest of the summer with the saddle interior. That color, man. This is almost like um, Lamborghini has a color called Montego, Montego Blue. It's super similar to that. You really never see Astons in kind of like, I mean, when's the last time you see an Aston? Normally like black. Black or, or white. Blue. But to have that blue on it, it just pops. Yeah, it makes it look sporty. And there's an Alfa Romeo, right? Mm -hmm. AC. Yeah. AC, there it is. All right, y'all. Toy barn, a lot of toys. Brian, you want your you want your mods to your car, <laughs> man. You guys better hurry up and holler at him before I before I take up all the time slots. <laughs> all right. So next step in this video is let's talk about entrepreneurship. Why you need to have that side hustle. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story. Um, this is why I advocate having a small business or a side business in addition to whatever your primary income is or your day job. So let me tell you this quick story, man. This is how I grew up. This is kind of motivated and changed my way of thinking because of the experiences I had as a kid. But when I was a kid, man, um, when I was in high school, and this is no knock to my parents. It was just a, the, the situation that we were in financially, and but it was a theme growing up. But grew up in the inner city, pretty much grew up poor, um, had great parents, great family, that kind of thing. But there was an experience I had when I was in high school. Uh, I tried out for the basketball team. You know, I played a lot of basketball, but I never was really into the organized sports stuff. Tried out for the basketball team my junior year. I made the team, uh, but of course, with the basketball team, you got your uniform and you got your shoes. And the shoes for the team were some Nike Air something, Air Maxes or something like that. I, don't, I can't remember. But they were $65 for the shoes. Now, I, I went to public school in the inner city and most of the kids that made the team were from the hood like where I was from and most of most of us were poor some of them were on welfare that kind of thing we weren't on welfare but some of the kids were and I was the only kid on a team of about I think it was probably about 14 of us something like that I was the only kid on the team that could not afford to get the basketball shoes to be on the team and when I went home and told my dad that I made the team and I got to get these shoes that cost $65 uh, my dad kind of like went off or whatever and it, and it was probably part of it you know like I don't blame my dad or anything like that uh, but it it did kind of hurt me to that realization that wow you know I go to school with all these kids we're all pretty much broke pretty much poor or whatever inner city and I'm the only one on the team like out of all these kids that that I can't get the shoes like I and I didn't like somebody actually to be honest with you I don't even know how I got the shoes I told my coach what happened and I don't know how I got the shoes but I do remember I had to give them back at the end of the basketball season 
which is crazy. I don't know where the shoes came from, honestly. Maybe my coach got them for me or something. But uh, I did have to give those shoes back at the end of the season. But I couldn't get the $65 shoes to be on the basketball team. And so how does that relate to you know, having a side business or a small business and a hustle? Well, that changed my form of thinking because at the time I said, you know what? When I get older and when I'm running my own life, I'm not a minor or a kid anymore. When I get older, I made a deal with myself and I said, money is not going to be my problem. I might have all kinds of other problems that we all have to deal with, but money is not going to be one of them. I'm gonna do it whatever I have to do so that if I have to buy some shoes or I gotta buy a car or I gotta buy any of your normal life wants and needs, I made a deal with myself that that's not gonna be my problem because I felt so bad about just not being able to get something basic when I went to school with all these other kids that were pretty much poor as well, but they were able to somehow do it. So I, so that changed my way of thinking. So fast forward to you know, coming out of high school, I knew I had to get a job, went to college, knew I wanted to be one of the best students so that I could get a good job offer and be able to support myself, make my parents proud and that kind of thing. And I did that, graduated number one in my class uh, in computer science, got a job in corporate America. But once I got into corporate America, and this leads into why I recommend that you start a side hustle or a small business, because I once I got into corporate America, good job and everything, but I was only making $35,000 a year. And maybe every year I would get a raise. Um, and I, you know, like before I like quit the nine to five, I went from making $35,000 a year to about $95,000 a year over like about 10 years. But I knew when I started out making that 35K, I knew there was a ceiling on how much money I could make every year. And if you wanna remove that ceiling, you have to have your own business or your own side hustle that can be something that you're passionate about, be something that you wanna work on and build on so that it can start making money and then there's no limits or ceiling on how much money you can make. The only limit is you know, how much you're willing, how much hard work you're willing to put in and how much brain power you wanna put into scaling that business and making it grow bigger and better. So what I did, I started I, I started several businesses. I never considered any of my businesses failures, but there were some business I, businesses I started that I left behind. I learned what I had to learn, and then I left those businesses behind until I found what I was really passionate about. Um, but I had started about a, at least two or three other businesses before I started the business that I still run today, which is that social network I built called HBCUConnect.com. Um, but I was passionate about it. I didn't make money with it for the first, like, three or four years, but it finally started making some money um, because the money showed up, the money showed up. Like I did my passion, built it, you know, built, had a high level, you know, skill, how to, you know, develop websites and that kind of thing. But I started a company, started making a little, little bit of money, but there were no ceiling, there was no ceiling on how much money I could make with that business. So it went from uh, making like $8,000 the, the first year we actually made a little bit of money then the next year, I think I made $16,000 on the side, right? On the side to my day job. And then I was like, you know what? That third year, I quit um, I quit my job. And I said, I'm gonna turn that 16,000 into, we're gonna make it do what it do. What it do. You know what I'm saying? Like make it do what it's gonna do. Uh, and, and went from 16,000 to, I don't know, the next year, I hired my brother, my sister, my boy Reg, who I worked with, my boy Lawrence, who I worked with. My, my my buddy's sister uh, I hired her so we had like a like seven or eight people like in the first year and I think the revenue went up to probably a hundred and I don't know what it was probably hundred fifty thousand or something like that so it was enough to live off of and to pay my my little team with everybody was making like you know minimal uh, but then we started doing better and better and better to to the point where I am today and I started I started side hustles even when I had my business going well. The real estate company for me was a side hustle. The software company that I started after my social network was a side hustle that has made good money, you know what I'm saying? Like, And I still run those businesses today. So I have like three main businesses and I even have started more side hustles. I started a um, an online course in real estate. So plug for my course, 
If you want to learn how to invest in real estate, check out the link in the description below because that's how I justify buying these supercars. But I started an online course. That's a side hustle. I started um, a YouTube channel. It's something I'm passionate about it, but it's a side hustle too. It's, it's, it makes a little bit of money. I probably make at least 30000 a year off of this little side hustle on YouTube, which is not nearly you know a main hustle, but it's just something like always have, and there, but there's no limits on it, you feel me? So always, if you want to get ahead, if you want to you know, be like me where, you're, where you don't want finances to be why you can't do something, you got to have some side hustles, man. You got to have some like small businesses that you start up. So if you got questions about starting a side hustle or questions about starting a small business and how to like take your little business to the next level, whatever, drop those questions in the comments. And then also take some action, man. Communicate what ideas you have for your side hustle just so you can put it out there and we can hold you accountable for taking that thing to the next level. All right. So that's my little knowledge for the day. Um, and my insight from Will Motivation. If you like what uh, we do on this channel, make sure you subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, make sure to hit the like button on this video and uh, look out for the next one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.